Okay, uh, this is part three of our new session where we're talking about the reality of, re of uh, our righteousness. And uh, it's important to understand that the plan of salvation that has been provided for all mankind is the uh, recognizing that man is a sinner and that he needs a savior and that our creator has made provision for all mankind to be saved. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, Who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. It's the will of the Creator, Yahuwah, that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But we also know and understand, just because it's Yahuwah's will that all men be saved, we know that all men aren't being saved. And the reason that's so is that mankind has a free will. They can choose to believe or not to believe. They can re, uh, choose to believe what the scripture declares about uh, the fallen nature of man and of his need for a savior, or they can choose not to believe that. Yahuwah has given man a free will of choice. And so there will not be anyone that can stand before our creator with any excuse. The Bible even says that they, uh, that, Mankind is without excuse. Even the reality of, of our creator is revealed in creation. And that we all, uh, man, man has an inner knowing that there is a creator and that he is uh, has to answer to that creator. And uh, now man may reject that uh, consciousness, awareness that, that there is a creator and they may because of the hardness of their heart, turn away and refuse to believe. But the reality is one day they will have to face the judgment of the Creator for what they have done. And the thing is that, that there will not be, um, you know, judgment will be swift because it won't be based upon what you did in your life. It's not based upon works of righteousness which we have done, and that's the deception that's in the world today is that most people believe that if they live a good life, if they're a good moral person, if they, quote, go to church and read their Bible or say prayers or whatever, that they're going to heaven. And, uh, or that they, you know, uh, they they somehow earned their, their own righteousness. In other words, our Creator owes them something for, because they, say so, quote, lived a, a good life. Uh, but the reality is, uh, as I've shared with you already, that the Bible says that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of Yahuwah, our Creator. In other words, we've all had this fallen nature that was passed down from Adam, Adam, and, and we've inherited that nature. Uh, we were by nature children of wrath, even as others, Ephesians chapter 2. We talked about the fact is that uh, once a person recognizes that he's a sinner, then he can turn to the Creator who has already declared that he was our Savior, our only Savior. And uh, recognizing that the plan of salvation is the simplicity of the gospel is this, is to believe that Yahusha, that is the name of the Creator, whether you know him by Jesus or by Yeshua, his actual real name, as I've shared with you, is Yahusha, and that translated from Hebrew into uh, English language is Yahuwah, is Savior or salvation, which I have shared in the Tanakh of the Old Testament. The Creator declared that about Himself, that He was Yahuwah, that is His name. Uh, the name Yahuwah has been substituted with the English word Lord in your Bible, and we've done many videos about this. But for those who are just watching, when view this video for the first time and don't understand why we use the name Yahuwah, uh, it's because that's the Creator's name. He declared that by Himself, that this is His name, and this would be His name throughout every generation, is to be known in every generation that we live in, and He said this is His name forever. So, you'll find that in Exodus chapter 3, when He revealed the name, His name to Moses or Masha, He said that this was His name forever. So, but he declared that he was our Savior, our only Savior. And, and he sent his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Yahushua 
is Yahuwah manifest in the flesh. Uh, there's many scriptures I'd like to get into, but not today. But 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 there's many scriptures that talks about the fact is that uh, Yahusha is Yahuwah. He is the creator. Uh, even though the scripture says he's the only begotten son of the father, he is Yahuwah himself. And if he wasn't Yahuwah, then who is he? He had to be sinless. He had to be uh, from everlasting to everlasting because it was prophesied that he would come from the ancient of age. In other words, he would, he would he'd come from, uh, uh, from eternity past, and that is the creator. Uh, there's many scriptures, uh, Yahushua himself declaring that if you've seen me, he said, you've seen the Father. He said that to Philip in John chapter 14. He said, if you, Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Um, so John chapter 10, verse 30, said, Yahushua himself said that he and the Father are one, and one translation is even translated as Yahu, uh, me and the Father are the same. They're the same person. Now, with that said, that uh, we have to understand that there's no that any good works that you do, that it will not change your nature. That's why you need the Savior. Is that you can't uh, inherit eternal life by just keeping the the law or the Torah. Is because you can't change your nature that way. The purpose of the Torah. We've talked about this in our past series. The purpose of the Torah was to reveal to you or to help you to understand that you needed a Savior because of the fact is that no one could keep the law because of man's fallen nature, the weakness of the flesh. And Paul wrote about this, talking about the weakness of the flesh. Shall no flesh be justified in his sight? Because if you were to break one point of the law, you became guilty of all of it. The law or the Torah was our, is and was our schoolmaster, schoolmaster bring, to bring us to the Messiah. In other words, it was to teach you of your fact that you are a sinner and that you're in need of a Savior. And no matter how good of a life you try to live, it will fall short. And it will not, because you can't change your own nature. You have to be born again. There, therefore, if any man be in Messiah, he's a new creature. So Messiah has to be in you for you to be a new creature. Now, I've shared with you that this new creation is a reality on the inside of you now, the moment that you believe. And uh, so with that fact and that understanding, we also understand that you, in the flesh, we're waiting for the adoption to, to be complete, the redemption of our body, because this body is in a fallen, it's still in its fallen nature. But redemption will be complete at the rapture of the church for all true believers in the Messiah, Jew and Gentile believers, and we we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, this corruptible shall have put on in corruption. Okay, we're going to pick this up on our next session. This video is getting a little long, so I need to stop it here, and we'll pick it up on our next time together. Please share this with others, and until next time, shalom.